You guys good now? Your mic's working? No. Where, where did Tech go? He was just here. Is he now underneath the table? Well, we're, we're burning daylight, so why don't we start uh, here and introduce ourselves and then get cracking. Okay. <laughs> All right. Start here. <laughs> I'll speak loudly. Uh, hi, I'm Robbie. Uh, I'm the voice of uh, Tuxedo Mask and uh, Moomin Rider and One Punch Man with yes! Yes! and Knuckles uh, and a whole bunch of other stuff that you can find on IMDb. I won't be offended if you look at your phones while we're in this. We're also on uh, Iron Blooded Orphans. It's on Toonami right now. Uh, so that would include uh, me, Max, and Zach, and all three of those things I just listed. So if you want to ask any questions from that zone, we can answer them. And uh, I've been a voice actor in LA for uh, about seven years, and uh, doing it full time for five. And this is my second Metrocon. I'm happy to be back with all you sweaty people. <laughs> My name is Max Middleman. I am, uh, this is my first MetroCon. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I play Saitama, the One Punch Man, the One Punch Man. Oh, yeah. I am Leo in Fire Emblem. I am Caden in Fire Emblem. I am Forrest in Fire Emblem. Are you the Fire Emblem in Fire Emblem? I am the Fire Emblem. <laughs> I've been voice acting for four years, and uh, and now I'm here in front of you, beautiful people. Uh, I'm Eric Stewart. You might know me as uh, Rock and James on Pokemon. And Squirtle. I'm also Seto Kaiba on Yu-Gi-Oh. I'm Meta Knight on Kirby. I am uh, Kirby. I am uh, <laughs> Gallery on yeah Kirby. There you are. Gallery on Slayers. Um, uh, I'm Peggy Pudgeon on Viva Pinata. I directed a lot of those shows as well. I worked on Ultimate Muscle, and my favorite character on that would be Dick Dick Van Dick, <laughs> which I helped name. Um, I've been a voice actor and a director for over 25 years, and uh, I'm also a singer songwriter. Play all original rock and roll. I toured with Ringo Starr, Leonard Skinner, Peter Frampton, and all sorts of people like that. So I do a lot of stuff. And this is my first Metrocon, and it's great to be here, and I'm going to capture that big. Hey guys, what's up? Um, my name is Zach Aguilar. Uh, I've been voice acting for around uh, four to five years. Some of the stuff I've done is, uh, as Robbie said, uh, Takaki in Iron Blooded Orphans, um, Arthur in the Seven Deadly, Sin uh, Seven Deadly Sins, Slins, Sins um, Slain in Alt Noah Zero, and uh, Tolkien Sword Art Online, and most recently, just announced not too long ago, Genos in One Punch Man. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's coming out uh, tonight, so you guys gotta watch. Watch it on Toonami, it's gonna be great. Um, this is my first MetroCon, it's such an honor to be here. Um, Florida's beautiful, but the weather. It's so humid! It's so humid, guys! Oh my gosh, um, uh, I'm a Californian, so I'm just a baby when it comes to weather. Um, anyways, uh, yeah. Richard Ian Cox. I'm um, Inuyasha and in Inuyasha. <laughs> Ranma, male and Ranma, and uh, Alleluia, Hallelujah, and Gundam Double O. Kai, and all these other guys. Um, and uh, I'm the voice of Revit on uh, Dino Trucks on Netflix right now, which is kind of awesome. You should go and watch it. Buy our merchandise, please. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm Kevin on Super Noobs, and we did, uh, Kirby and I have done X-Men together, and a whole bunch of other um, shows like that too. So, um, yeah, I'm half asleep, I just flew in, I'm really kind of cold, because the air conditioning is a bit of a bitch. Yeah, you get that turned yeah, up, please. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the Canadians are freezing! <laughs> It's a gig, it's a gig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Kaiba charges. Yes. 
Yeah. Hi, I'm Kirby Morrow, and I play every other male character in anime that they haven't mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> and for the females. <laughs> and, uh, you know me as Moroku, Goku, <coughs> anything that ends in Ku. Uh, I play uh, Bob Fennell, Michelangelo from Ninja Turtles, Cyclops from X-Men, uh, and Cole from Ninjago. Um, and there's been other stuff. Um, and on camera stuff. Richard and I both do a lot of on camera stuff, which is... Uh, Doing quite well in Canada right now because your dollar is so strong. <laughs> it's so mighty. It's awesome. So, hi, good to be here. Uh, hi, I'm Laura Post. Uh, I am just recently announced I'm Blizzard in One Punch Man. Woo! I'm uh, Valentine in Skullgirls. I'm Ari in League of Legends. Uh, I'm Diana in Little Witch Academia, and Nozomi in Love Live, and I am Ragyo Kiryui in Kill a Cow. Ragyo Kiryui was really fun to say. Hi! <laughs> that was Japanese. Hi! Great, so now we should take some questions so we can give you some answers. Who wants to be in charge of picking? You do. See, I, I only know the shows I work on. I, I don't know their voices. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, to, to our left, but there's no more to our right. So, Laura is the only one that doesn't have to do it. It's really human here. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a California guy. Wait, on, no, dude, it's really human here. I'm a California guy, and I've got to get back. So. Okay. Um, Max and I work together all the time, so he has a great impression of me. Here it goes. You ready? Oh. <clears throat> wow! That's it! <laughs> and then, uh, mine is... I'm Max Mellman. I do this voice all the time. Turtful. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's too good. You guys are gonna do your thing. He's gotta do you. Take the pass on that. that was good. That was good and intimidating. I like that. Okay, good. So you got to pick someone else up. Just say you like ramen. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you're, you're not going to do me? Come on. Yeah. 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 Hang on. Here's my curvy impression. Are you 18? <laughs> Bang on. That was good. What's this one? That's good. All right, someone else pick someone, please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, from Richard. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. So you was in the the movie Ghost Rider, right? Yes. And which part of the scene you was in? There was a part where if you sneezed, uh, you were missing. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when he grabbed that helicopter pilot and he oh, threw yeah. the helicopter? And, uh, and I was the helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> Tremendous range. Hey, you, you, you piss me off, too. Oh! That happens a lot. You piss me off. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, so in the line. back. Yes. Fanta yeah, with the fantastic hair. Um, hi. Eric, we had another panel. You were talking about how men and I meant something to the young men who, you know, they never heard someone on TV who was a positive role model for them. It, it is of the, of, of the Spanish-speaking people, yes, yes. Right. right. Um, did any of the rest of you voice actors the short version of that answer was I had done Meta Knight as Antonio Banderas in that style. It was a choice that I made and they thought, oh, why, why Spanish? And I said, why not? And years later when I was doing a convention in Florida, a group of teenage boys came up to me and said, thank you for doing a voice that sounded like us, that did not make fun of us, that was not a stereotype. So that's right. what that was about. Did you have an experience with that word? Sorry, go ahead. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I had uh, MC Hammer came up to me and said, thank you for making Hammer Pants seem cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I said, no problem, but <laughs> I'll have a latte. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
obviously Mennonite in my class by himself, I guess. There you go. But that's a good that's a good question. Thank you. Yes. Very meek hand coming up. You can raise it higher if you want. Maybe that's better. Good. Yes. Or you mean like something like, I'm a flaming mole trans. <laughs> or, uh, I'll just use this trusty frying pan as a drawing pan. <laughs> from the audience once. Right. <laughs> and then... That good question, yes. In the back of the wonderful silver hair, yes. You. Why don't we, you want to do the gifts at the end of the panel? That way, you know, no one will try to steal it from the other guy? Unless we can set it in front of us. Is it something we can show in a uh, PG-13 room? Yes. And is it older than 18? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so while you do the gifts, we'll take another question, because this might be all about it. Okay, awesome, thank you. Who's got another question for us? Yes, in the green shirt. Yeah, you're saying, it's like, what did I wear today? <laughs> Out of curiosity, do any of you guys get time to play games? If you do, what kind do you play? I'm a huge gamer geek. Uh, I've got my uh, Atari 2600 in a box with 50 games. I've got my Genesis with 32X uh, things so I can play Doom. I've got PS1s, 2s. Xbox. I'm now playing The Division on, uh, on my Xbox One. I play with the same three video gamer idiots, as we call ourselves, every Wednesday night for the last eight years. Does that mean I'm a gamer? <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm in The Division. You probably kill me all the time. I probably do. <laughs> and the last part of my gamer geek thing is way before the uh, interwebs, when there wasn't any online gaming, I had the PS1s with the link cable, and I had two televisions in my house with picture-in-picture. And I would play Doom with my buddy, and we'd run video signals from my game system to his TV and his game system to my TV so I could see his view in the picture-in-picture. -picture. Gamer Geek? I think so. You guys want to see what we got? Yeah. I got one of these last year, and it's still sitting on my vanity shelf in my office. Last year it was a tuxedo mask. This year it's a little ducky moomin rider. Oh. <laughs> Is like a giant snake gonna pop out of this one? Is that gonna? No, it's just a duck for fun. Oh. Oh my god. That's awesome. I I think I won. I've got a solo kind of duck. That's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah, do you game? Yeah, uh, Max and I, we, we're, we're Overwatch buddies. We play Overwatch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we, they started ranked play, Max, uh, Max was one of the top, like, above thousand uh, Soldier 76 players in the world. Yeah, he's stone cold. He's got, like, the reflexes of a caffeinated 12 year old. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, we, we do. We play together pretty often. Yeah. What are your <laughs> oh, come on now, we're crossing the line into Superman. <laughs> what headset do you use? Question? Question? You in the yellow. Wait, wait, there's an answer over here. Still. No, it's okay. Oh, no, 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 she's got a gamer no, no, question no, no, no. to answer. Please. I also play games. There's really not much of an answer to it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I play the Love Life game a lot. Yeah. It's like casual level, but I don't care. It's awesome. Rhythm <laughs> games are my jam. So. <laughs> you picked Pikachu, didn't you? Yeah. 
Um, this is for all the voice actors. Um, out of all the characters you guys have done, which character describes you the most? Like your personality. Oh. <laughs> Snails from My Little Pony. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I get a thing with this. <laughs> I would definitely go with like not tuxedo mask, but just Mamoru. Yeah, because he's kind of like he kind of like flirts by being a jerk. That's <laughs> kind of my mo. So yeah. I'd say uh, Kose from Your Line April, because oh. uh, uh, he was he's kind of you know I, I was shy as a kid because he's shy. I played the piano, he plays the piano. Um, sad things happen to him. Um, mine's kind of a combination. Uh, I liked girls a lot in high school, so Brock. <laughs> um, and for some strange reason, I can really channel the sarcastic vibe of Kaiba. Yeah. So I would think it's a combination of those two guys. Yeah, that's a tough it's weird though. Uh, I think it'd be Genos because, uh, like, just you know, it, it kind of makes me think of not really giving up. You know what I mean? Like he just he keeps fighting, trying to get stronger and stronger, and uh, I think that's like that's just super cool. To uh, I don't know. Um, I guess I guess even if you're beaten down like a million times, you know, you just you just got to get back up, keep training, and keep working hard. So yeah. Good. yeah. I know you all want me to say Moroku. <laughs> well, he does have a suck hole. Suck hole, there we go. <laughs> Next question. Uh, oh. oh, no, sorry. <laughs> be Nozomi in Love Live because she was like sort of lonely as a kid which was totally me because I was a nerdy kid uh, and <laughs> and uh, what was really great about she was she felt really like lucky to be part of Love Live and like really connected about that and I felt that way about being part of the show I was like I'm just so happy to be here and she's like I'm just so happy to be here so it's probably <laughs> Nozomi <laughs> good question that was good All right. no. yes sir Oh, there you go. Well, if you're in, if you plays on my most recent album, come see me at the, at the table. Ten bucks will get you a CD, and nine dollars are the Peter Frampton part of it. <laughs> there you go. Very good. Very good. super easy for me. Uh, I'm on a Nickelodeon show. It's still airing. It's called uh, Breadwinners. It was a Saturday morning cartoon. Uh, for for the six weeks that they promoted us, we, we beat Spongebob for the first time in like 10 years for ratings. And then they just kind of buried us. And uh, I think a lot of it was because the internet hated us real bad. Uh, we were super hated on the internet. Like the IMDb, the show is like a 3.4. When the YouTube video that it was based off of dropped, it was like 90% likes. And then as soon as Nickelodeon picked it up, it just bit the big one. And um, I feel like that one for me is like probably one of the things that I'm most proud of that ended up getting buried the most. Now we did 80 episodes. I'm happy with that. It was a great run. I love that show. I think it's really fun. It's for the target audience. So that was one I would have liked. It, you know, when should, all shows run their course. But that's one that I would have liked to see go a little further and, and keep its time slot, but you never know. Numbers are numbers, and networks are networks. SpongeBob Mafia, dude. Yeah. <laughs> SpongeBob. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll agree with Robbie. I guested on Breadwinners a few times, and it was one of my favorite shows to guest on. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I wish it. I wish it. Uh, had more episodes in it. 
that's an easy one for me. I directed a show called Viva Pinata, which, yeah. was, which was a which was a prelay show. So we were uh, we recorded one actor at a time, and I assembled the dialogue, sent it to the animators to be animated, and then come back the way that uh, we do a lot of the original Japanese shows. The show was ten minutes long, episode ten minute episodes about nothing. It's the Seinfeld of animation. Um, because I work a lot in production, I'll tell you the reason that a lot of those shows get canceled, even though they're great, is that there's no licensing for the other things that we sell. So when the video game didn't do very well, and there's no card game to go with it, and all those other things, we had good ratings, but they killed the show. Um, we did two seasons of it, and you can find all the episodes on Hulu, but it was just a great, it was, we had a six person writing team, like a sitcom, writing every episode, and they would just throw ideas out, and if it was a funny idea, it became a show. Because there was no gameplay involved in the show at all. It has nothing to do with the video game whatsoever, except for the actual animated characters. So because of that, we could do anything we wanted. And uh, that's the thing I'm most proud of. And if someone says, you know, in the whole list of things, it's not the most famous thing I worked on, but it's like, if you want to see me as a director, and I, I play some small characters in it, be a pinata, hands down. Well, something that you worked on that you wish would had a bigger audience. It was really good, that but it was really good. That you're very proud of. It didn't have the same sort of even like video game stuff. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. 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 Um, so there was this one really cool uh, video game, and it's 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 out right now. It's called uh, uh, Zombie Vikings for the PS4, and so um, basically, uh, you know, super super crazy. Uh, I think it's just a really like a really funny uh, a funny video game. Um, You'd have to go check it out. I just know it didn't really get a lot of popularity. It was on the um, the PlayStation Plus like vote to uh, like they had the little vote like you get three games or something and you get to vote for uh, for whatever game you get to uh, whatever game you get to have for free if you're a PlayStation Plus member. And it didn't really um, get a ton of votes, but um, but the game is really fun and I think like the the voice acting and it's uh, really really cool and funny. So uh, so that was one thing. Uh, we did a show back home in Canada um, called Dr. Dimension Pants that was, was the funniest, one of the funniest shows I've ever been a part of. It was a prelay show and it did, we did one season and that was it and it just never really kind of, they didn't push it, you know, quite as much as maybe they could have, but it just, I guess it never really found its audience, but it was a really, really funny show. It was always about best joke in the room wins, like even outside of the writing, if you sort of ad lib something that was, you know, it would stay. So that was a really funny, I mean, you could, you can find it online, but it's uh, in terms of, I played a unicorn <laughs> that barfed rainbows and was British. So right there, that's the hook. I don't know why. I'm not sure it's related, but it, the, the show wouldn't hire me, so I don't know why it didn't work. <laughs> Um, probably for me, it's a video game. It's The Evil Within, and I know some people here know it. Yeah, but see, that's the thing. It's like some people here know it. It's a really, really, really good survival horror game, and like I'm a huge fan of like Resident Evil and stuff. So I was so stoked when it came out, and then like not a lot of people were talking about it. But I thought it was great, and I love it. And six seasons in a movie, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah. And mine was uh, Project Arms. If anybody remembers that. Uh, show a bunch of guy, young guys lose an appendage and they become mm -hmm. yeah, but it's a yeah. cool show and, and I just disappeared. Yeah. Who hasn't picked yet? Somebody pick. Pick, pick, pick. You. Right there. Yeah, no. Yeah. Oh, that's awkward. Putting <laughs> <laughs> to you in the blue. Yeah. Okay. Sure. When you guys work a job like voice acting, I assume you have headphones on and there's probably only so many people that you actually get to talk to or you listen to in those headphones. What is that relationship like, and what kind of shorthand do you have with them to kind of get what you want out of the job, you know, like, can you give us a little insight into that shorthand? Is there somebody else on the headphones when you're working a job like that? Well, that changes in all different, I mean, you know, I direct myself on a lot of the shows since I was a director, so the, I'm talking to myself, which is usually <laughs> a strange thing to do. But my grandmother used to say, if you talk to yourself, it means you have a lot of money. 
Um, <laughs> uh, that's what she used to say. I, I'm not saying that's just the life I lead. But um, it really depends. I mean, I do a lot of commercial stuff too where there'll be an entire committee sitting in the room and they'll all have their different opinions and you hope that they just filter it through the director to give you something that you can actually work with to a degree. Um, but it's all different, uh, th different dynamic. I'll say as a director to an actor, um, the, the, the way that I approach being a director is I want to gain your trust so that you know that we're on the same team. It's not my way or your way. It's like I look good if you look good or sound good and we're trying to do something together. And if you don't get, gain the trust of the actor that you're directing, you're never going to get anything and you're both going to just put up those walls. So you want to trust your director and you want your director to feel like you know, they're, your, they're your friend, that you have the same goal. So in terms of listening to that voice, you talk to someone the way in a booth the way you would talk to different people in a room. If you were at a dinner party and there were five different people sitting there and you told an off-color joke and one person laughed, you realize that's the person you could be that way with. You see the people, the body language from someone else at that table is offended by that. You realize you've got to speak to them in a different way. It's the same way that dealing with actors. You've got to know who your audience is in order to interact with them in the right way. At least that's how I approach it as a director. So. Hopefully that answers your question. Is there an engineer in there? So you have Sometimes I self-engineer my stuff too. I'm sort of, I mean, that's just me. But, you know, I don't let anyone else in my booth. And, you know, so. when, you're, when you're not self-directing your engineering, I think to answer your question, there is almost always an engineer and a director. Sometimes they might be the same person, but pretty rarely. That's pretty standard. And you do filter your questions through that. When you get to be your own way, that'd be off. But mostly you have a director that you rely on. And when he says having the panel filter it through them, they have a talk back button. If you're talking, I think you're asking about logistics. Yes. And they, they have their conversation on the other side of the glass. You can't hear them. And then the, the director filters that all down and tells you what you need to do to get the performance that they're looking for. It's typically the way it goes down. When you're in the room with another actor, like in prelay, then most of the time you're in the same room with them. And then you get to play the same way that you would play on camera or on stage, still being directed by a director on the other side of the class. Would you ever say something back like, oh, well, turn me up a little bit on this? Oh, like, sure. Do you have, you it's can called do setting that. levels, and okay. we do that at the top of every session. And you can set your headphone levels, and they're getting levels in the studio, because if you get real loud and you yell, or you're going to be real quiet, they want to be able to set that up so that it plays either way, on both ends of the spectrum. Sure, going? Good. <laughs> I got a good uh, story <laughs> about this. Um, so. I went in for the callback for the lead in a, in a new series, um, and there was all these people on the line, my headphones, in LA. And in 20 years of doing this as a job, I never once, when you audition, you just read your own lines. No one has ever read the lines in between. In 20 years, never. So there was one character had the first line, I had the second line, and then it went like that. So when I started reading, I jumped into the second line off the beginning, and I went to jump to my next line, and the director on the phone in LA started to read the line in between. And I stopped, I'm like, oh, uh, are you gonna read the lines with me? And she said, well, it kind of works better that way, doesn't it? <laughs> and there's all the executives and everybody on the line, I'm like, okay, uh, good, Let, let's start again. And I'm sitting there and I'm waiting, and I'm like, um, you, you have the first line. She goes, oh, so she reads the first line. I read the second, she reads the third, I read the fourth, and then nothing. <laughs> and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting. I'm like, uh, blank, uh, it's, it's your line. And she says, do you need me to read them with you, or can you just read them with yourself? <laughs> <laughs> 20 years, this has never happened. I didn't get the part. <laughs> you got her part. <laughs> And, and to, to add to the craziness of the committee, though, and I, I, I tell people this story, too. It's like there'll be like 10 people in the room, right? You get your advertising people, your agency people, stuff like that, right? And you're in the booth. Sometimes you're brought into the booth. You didn't even meet those people in person. You just walk in and see them like in an aquarium window, right? And this is what you see. If you, if you get this, yeah, can we just try one? Just, just do, do one. That's your direction. Can you just try one? You go, okay, and you read it down. And then you see this. And then you get, yeah, can we just try that again? That's your direction. And you're like, oh, they hate me. They realize they just cast the wrong guy on the casting tape. Uh, okay, great. And you try it again. And then you hear, you see a little bit more of it. 
And, and so you think they hate you, which you really, this is what's really going on. If you, the talk back was open, I ordered the roast beef, <laughs> not the turkey. I don't understand why you never get my lunch order right. I, look, just because you're vegan doesn't mean, you know, things like that. And that's what's going on. But you don't get that. You just get this. And the worst piece of direction I ever got in a commercial uh, booking was, can you do that a little bit more orange? <laughs> And I was not reading for an orange or anything related to an orange, but as a professional actor, I said, hold on. Yes, I think I got it. And did it, and of course it was more orange. <laughs> the one with the hands. <laughs> sure, yeah. Sure. Yes? I was saying that I don't think that Kaiba is truly a villain. I think he's a rival. I think that to be the best, which of course is Yugi, I have to admit that, you need someone that pushes you to be the best. Otherwise, he could just relax and just sit around, right? So if you follow the story, um, all the way to the Egyptian story arc, you know that Kaiba is Yugi's, or the Pharaoh's sparring partner, right? Well, you can't really be someone's sparring partner in modern day high school. That would be kind of weird. This is my best friend, my girlfriend, and my sparring partner, right? <laughs> So the way that I approached him was that the, the, the sarcasm and the way that he's needling him is basically keeping him at the top of his game. So that's the complicated part about that, is treating him as a rival, not as a villain. But we also know if you know the manga, you know that kind of his real story, right? Kind of kills his father by pushing him out the window. Right? No, that's, that's episodes one and two, which we never aired. We started with episode three. I know. So, so Kaiba, with his protection of his younger brother, that's why they both became orphans, well that's kind of an easy way to do it, right? Is that, that's why he's basically taken over the father role of protecting, they are abused children, and so there's, the, there's a lot of stuff that goes on, and that's why he is so protective of him himself and his brothers, because of, that's the complicated part. So knowing a little bit of the backstory, which I don't know with most of the characters I play, but this one took a lot of time because I was directing the show and it took us a long time to cast it until finally I said, I'll play it. It really was like they were getting frustrated. They just could not find what they were looking for. And I, and I finally said, I think I, I can do this because I, I got the, the, the gist of what he was about. You know, that angry young man thing. But, uh, you know, I, I don't think he's a, a bad guy. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Good question. Thank you for that. Everybody one time, go. Uh, uh, the character, t Raven. 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 Zach? Yeah. <laughs> that was such a psycho. That was such a good psycho. That was like, you. I have a question for Zach. Yeah. That was brilliant. I wish someone had caught that on video. That was great. I'm such a big fan of the seven deadly sins. Oh, really? Very cool. cool. Not the show. No. Yeah, all of the scenes. Yeah. I was wondering exactly what was it like for you, like to see your character as you're voicing him. I, I, 
I love art from home. Really? Oh wow. Oh my gosh, it's so cool, you know, to uh, just you know, try to try and get the voice and get into get into the moment and stuff and fighting against uh, Hendrickson too, you know, me and uh, me and KG Tang were were kind of going back and forth like I was running into him as I was done recording. So I recorded like the first part of Arthur and then KG came in and he recorded Hendrickson and I was like, dude, you pick up the flag? like, well, he recorded Hendrickson and then I go back in and I tell KG, I'm like, dude, oh my god, you sound so cool. And so, you know, like we're just going back and forth and I love hearing, uh, I love hearing other voices in my headphones, you know, like so, because we all, for anime, we record individually, so it's really cool to like, to, to like, I guess you're, it feels like I'm able to get more into my character as I'm, you know, kind of playing off of someone, and I know Arthur, I believe, was voiced by a, um, by a woman in, in Japanese, right? So, um, so I mean, it was a little, uh... Typecasting. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, it's just really cool, you know. Um, I'm so honored to be a part of the show. Hopefully, season two happens. I know Arthur, you know, Arthur gets a big part in season two if it does happen. So I guess we will see. Now you have to pick someone. Um, uh, you, the yeah. Okay. Um, this is for all of you. Uh, what is the funniest blooper or outtake that you've ever experienced while voice <laughs> Kirby's got to think about this one because he doesn't know which one to pick. <laughs> <laughs> so many, so many. It's, it's tough because this is supposed to be family friendly. Yeah, really. <laughs> uh, and if it's from a cartoon, there are some of the filthiest sessions. I will say that the women who have said dirtier things than any of the guys on the shows I work for. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. They were dirtier. Uh, mine don't involve me. But, uh, <laughs> one is true because I heard it and I was there for it, and the other one is sort of lore in Vancouver. Okay. <laughs> the first one is uh, during a recording of uh, X-Men Evolution. Yeah. We'd recorded a good portion of the show, and at that point, actors get bored and they start wandering out of the studio and they don't have lines for a while. And so I'd wandered out of the studio, I was sitting in the sofa uh, watching. I was, in the, I was in the, uh, on the engineering side and I was watching the record. <clears throat> And uh, most people were sitting down, and a certain actor was standing. He plays a rather gruff guy on the show. And so he had, uh, and we love him, and he had an exert that he had to do, like a big ramp up. And he did it, and he, like, he put his all into it. And he just, you know, he goes for it. And you heard audibly on the track. <laughs> thing that actually happened. And then off mic, because to me, the funniest things ever recorded happen off mic. <laughs> All you heard in the room was, Oh my god! <laughs> oh my! <laughs> and the other, the other one, which is lore in Vancouver, is there's another actor, different actor, who had to burp. <laughs> For his, you know, for the moment, and so he's like, no, no, I can do it. I don't need a stunt burper. And, and so he, he, he says, all oh, I just need a can of coke. So he like takes his can of coke, he chugs the whole, the whole thing, and uh, and he goes and does the one of the most glorious burps to have ever been recorded, like Eudora Welt, and puked. <laughs> So this, this is on a dap somewhere hidden away in a vault in Vancouver. And it's, uh, it's one of my favorite things ever. <laughs> the way that actor tells the story is it did come out, it hit he the stand, and he caught it all <laughs> back <laughs> on. <laughs> Donald Trump is still there. Ricochet. You got one? Oh, okay. Um, mine to. Uh, so it's just a commercial, it wasn't an animated anything, but I was talking about breast cancer, because it was like a healthcare thing, and first time I called it breath cancer. <laughs> take, two, take two, best cancer. It was the weirdest thing. Uh, yeah, so that was pretty great. Breast and best cancer. <laughs> it was really, 
we did a lot of um, we did a lot of promos for the networks that we were preparing the shows, right? For the WB, for Fox, stuff like that. And I was one of the main promo guys that I go in and jump in and say, you know, "Coming up next on the WB," that sort of stuff. And they would hand me like a ton of promos to read um, in the 15 minutes I had between the other stuff that we were doing there. The engineer that worked that room would save all of our outtakes because there was a lot of cursing because we would stumble on things that were poorly written and things like that. And then every Christmas, <laughs> we'd give out a CD to all of the actors <laughs> with different songs, different cuts on the CD based on the curse word used, <laughs> scored over some beautiful Christmas music. <laughs> so I have some fantastic versions of like the F word over White Christmas. <laughs> And, and, and with all of the actors, and it's like, it's just that stuff. It's nothing of the other words in between. It's just constantly that, 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 all of it, right? And whenever I get those Christmas gifts, I realize I'm the one that's cursing the most. <laughs> I mean, honestly. Now, a good voice actor will continue to stay in character when making the mistakes and doing the little outtake things like that so there are like definitely Brock and James and Kyle using all of that kind of stuff so when I finally retire from voice acting completely I will release that yeah. <laughs> uh, somehow we only have five minutes left speed round yeah. so speed round ready and go for uh, Robbie Robbie you voice movement writer right yes do you bike and if you do did you get any of those experiences through Woman Rider? I did not ride my bicycle to sessions. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a bicycle and I have a motorcycle. Oh! Excellent. Yes. Good speed round question and answer. Yes. yes. Robbie, what is your favorite style of music? Oh, I love uh, uh, classic R&B, 90s hip hop, and yeah. classic rock. Nice. Who else has a question for Robbie? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh. Right there. Yes. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> what was it like voicing in Jaguar? Awesome. <laughs> Good answer. Yeah. Max? Yeah, way back there. Yes. Uh, to get in character for Saitama, did you shave your head or anything? <laughs> 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 now I'll have to. Yeah. Good answer. Uh, is someone else make you pay? Oh, no, right in front. Besides uh, Inuyasha, X-Men Evolution, and Zoid, how many other uh, characters of yours does Kelly bash? Oh, <laughs> all of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving on, uh, maroon shirt, long arms. Handsome man. Yeah, yeah. Kirby. Yes, sir. Could Goku be Superman? Mystic! Mystic! 
stick. Pokemon Go question is a pretty good one to end on. Yeah. Thank you so much for being a great panel. See you later.